so this is again an um, easy to understand self explanatory picture of the anatomy of vestibular system you are looking at your uh, superior your posterior and your horizontal semicircular canals you can see utricle you are seeing at the saccule and uh, you are looking at the nerves very closely you see that the each semicircular canal is sending and the otolith organs are sending separate inputs to the vestibular nerve and you can also appreciate the cochlear nerve and the facial nerve all these three things are together leaving through the internal auditory meatus okay fine here the bony labyrinth the bony part the bony it's a little bit removed so that we can see what's inside the main thing which i want you to look at is that the utricle and the saccule they are not in a single compartment they are two separate things connected only through the endolymphatic duct okay and your cochlea the cochlear endolymph and the saccular endolymph is connected through a tube ductus reunions okay so the cochlea and the semicircular canal and utricle is not directly connected it is connected through the saccule okay so between the utricle and the cochlea you have two tubes one is your uh, ductus reunions and the endolymphatic duct okay and you can also appreciate that all the three semicircular canals are having the base or or standing on the utricle okay so the utricle supports all these three uh, semicircular canals and they all three share the same endolymph okay which means same compartment it's all connected not like the utricle and saccule which is connected through the tube a small uh, a narrow tube but this is connected very well okay so anything that utricle sends it can easily go into the semicircular canals and if we will look at the anatomy of the utricle and uh, this is important because there is uh, a disorder named bppv benign parasitism uh, parasitismal positional vertigo uh, where this is very important this anatomy is very important okay fine just like we have type 1 and type 2 hair cells in the cochlea we have type 1 and type 2 hair cells in the vestibular system also okay the only difference between them the hearing uh, hair cells and the vestibular hair cells is the presence of kynocilium okay the kynocilium is the tallest stereo uh, uh, stereocilium okay it's the tallest one so this is absent in the hearing hair cells and is present in the vestibular hair cells that's how we will differentiate the type 1 type 2 fibers between vestibular and the hearing hair cells other things are exactly common you can also see that okay you are looking at how the hair cells are connected right the hair cells the nerve fiber is connected like a calyx okay and the efferent fiber is on the afferent nerve fiber okay then you have your outer hair cells kind of uh, type 2 fibers which is pillar cells and you have your afferent directly and the efferent directly on the hair cell okay so just like your hearing hair cells you go through the polarization depolarization repolarization the same thing happens in the vestibular system also the first picture the a is normal there is no movement at all even there is no movement we know that the uh, hearing uh, hair cells have a spontaneous rate spontaneous firing right just like that we have a spontaneous firing in the vestibular hair cells also so they will be firing even there is no movement this is your baseline okay just like you know you are uh, breathing normally and you do exercise you breathe heavily and if you have any problem you are uh, breathing or you are meditating your breathing goes down right so your frequency of breathing goes down 
and if you are uh, doing any cardio exercise you are breathing the frequency of breathing will be increasing likewise when the hair cell is not working at all it has a normal pattern okay and when it is exciting when it is you no know, sending signals to the brain when it's excitatory then the the impulses the nerve firing increases and when it is going through an inhibition it is decreasing okay decreasing means below the normal spontaneous rate c so the a will mean normal state b is excitatory and the c is inhibitory okay we al always saw that when the smallest stereocilia falls towards the tallest one it is excitatory okay which means the gates open and the potassium goes inside and then your depolarization happens and you the nerve will fire okay in the c when the tallest stereocilia falls on the shortest one that means all the doors are closed and it is inhibitory okay the responses are trying to stop they are going to seize and they are going the the, the nerve impulse is going to come below the spontaneous rate okay the abc is actually 2d two dimensional picture where we see only the one layer one row of the hair cells on the top you can see in the plane of polarization you are see there are so many rows of hair cells so that's how it will be in reality if you're looking at through a mi electron microscope you are actually going to see a lot of stereocilia there not just in the 2d in the three dimensional but you have only one kinocilia okay one row of kinocilium but you have many rows of stereocilia okay any doubt in that <laughs> 